Hi and welcome back to my channel. Today we are just talking about what it was like for me to buy my first home and what the whole home buyer experience is. Um, I'm out in North Carolina so um, maybe it's different for you different places so keep that in mind but some of this stuff is just going to be bottom line things you should probably think about before you consider getting a house. Now the one thing you want to think about is how it benefits you to have a house. It benefits you because you're pretty much investing into something. It's tangible. You can sell it. You can own it. You can rent it. You can do so many things with it versus when you have an apartment you're pretty much just throwing money at rent each month to never get anything out of it. And for some people it's worth it though because it's easier, uh, more convenient because happiness and lifestyle does matter in your choices of what you do. So why is it whenever I'm having fun, it's wrong? Um, another thing is when you buy a home, budget is everything. So and putting yourself in a position where you can buy a home, if you've ever wondered, like, how do I get there? How I make it so I have the money to buy a home. Now it's pretty much really simple in the way that you just want to make sure every month that you're able to put away excess money. Um, money not for like fun stuff, not for, you know, I guess your house is going to be fun one day, but Future. money for important things. Um, money that you just hide. Uh, if you could do that for a year or two, honestly, you will have what you need. Uh, my biggest tip is really for a year or two before you buy a house, if you can, just find a really cheap living situation because that's what I've been doing for the past year. Uh, I lived in an apartment with uh, my old roommate and she's a really good friend of mine and her boyfriend and it pretty much... It was a two bedroom apartment, which was like $900, but between the three of us, it was pretty much like $300 and then some change for utilities. So my whole rent and utilities was coming out to like $350 each month. So if you think about that, it leaves a lot of excess money to put away versus if you get that apartment that's, you know, $1,200, $1,100 in downtown, or if you're paying, you know, even $800. You know, that's money that you could save if you just suck it up, have a roommate, have two roommates, live in somebody's house, um, move back in with your parents just for like a year. It doesn't have to be forever. It's temporary so you can get where you want to be. So maybe being a little like annoyed at having roommates or a little, you know, at agitated at being with your parents is worth it because then you'll be able to get that house that you want uh, and make the investment. Um, another really important thing is your credit. Uh, you definitely have to have at least like a, I'd say like a 680 score before you try. I had something a little better than that. Uh, I won't say too much, but uh, definitely you want to have like a good credit score and like a low credit score is like if you're six and under, that's low. I'd say like 650 to 7, that's like okay. Then once you hit like above 7, that's when you're like you have good credit. If you're like in the 800s, you have great credit. So anything below like 6, I mean you really have, you would have to have a lot of money for a down payment to get a home. So really consider that. And the way that I built up my credit was really just by like buying small things and paying them off immediately. Anyone who tells you you can use 30% of your credit card, uh, that used to be a rule of thumb, but it's a terrible rule of thumb. It really doesn't get you that instant gratification of building your credit. Uh, the best thing to do is just like buy gas with it, um, buy coffee with it, you know, and then immediately pay it off. Just do small stuff like that. And like, I can testify to that. That is how I built my score. I literally, just have a zero balance all the time and then I buy one thing and pay it off. Buy another thing, pay it off. I don't mess with making payments. I mean, obviously some people don't have that luxury, but if you do and you already are at like a low, like you have a couple hundred dollars on it, just pay it off now. Don't worry about it, just pay it off. Um, another thing to know before you buy a house is that Basically, they're gonna tell you all these fees and it's gonna sound crazy. It's gonna sound like a lot because they're gonna tell you that you need this for a down payment and you need like 
four, like between two to five thousand dollars for closing costs. And then they're going to talk about earnest money and due diligence fees and your inspections and your loan application fee. And they're going to like tell you all about your insurance and everything that you need before you can actually move in and, uh, you know, get a house. And you're going to be like, oh my God. I don't have that, but the thing is, if you've budgeted for closing costs, that is what closing costs are. That's one thing I didn't realize at first, so when, like, we started getting to the nitty gritty of it, I was like, oh my god, how am I going to pay for anything? I'm going to die. I'm not going to have anything. And then it actually ended up being less than I thought it was, and I feel like that's why they do that, though. They try to, like, scare you a little bit, like, are you sure you can do this? Are you sure? And then you're like, no. <laughs> That's pretty much how it was for me. Uh, I ended up going all the way through with it and having more left over than I thought I was going to. So always just like make your budget, talk with like a professional. Like the first thing you do when you want to get a house is you don't start looking on Zillow and just picking stuff and trying to do it yourself. You'll just get spam. What you really want to do is you want to do one of two things. You want to get pre-approved. Very important. Get pre-approved and fill in your information, type in mortgage, go to Quicken Loans, uh, and they will find you. They will come for you. They will call you, call you, call you, and you will be spammed with a billion different options. Uh, you really only need one or two to just get pre-approved because you need to get pre-approved before you can really shop for a house. So once you get pre-approved, then you can go and you can find a realtor. And the thing that I learned was that if you're buying the house, the seller pays for your realtor. That just made me so happy. I was like, really? Like, I don't have to pay for this? Like, after you hear all the fees, you're like, and what do I owe you? No, no, no. Take advantage of that. Get yourself a good realtor and enjoy the person that you work with. I actually had an amazing realtor. His name was Aaron, and he was just, like, the best. He definitely hooked me up and he did a lot of like great things for me um at first I actually talked to someone else that my dad recommended and he was like really mad I was like oh maybe this is just how it is and then one of my friends was like hey why don't you meet with uh this guy I work with because she's in like law and stuff like that to do with realtors and like I met with him and I was like oh, he's amazing he like gave me everything I wanted he listened and just like really go and get yourself somebody who's gonna make you happy because you know, it's a free perk, take it, enjoy it, don't settle, and then the next thing I would say that is, like, something I didn't know either was, like, you don't want to use, like, little apps when you're, like, doing your loan application, like, don't use PayPal, don't use Cash App, don't, like, do any weird transactions, because they basically monitor your whole bank account for like the whole process like they verify your employment you have to be employed two years with your company or you prove that you were employed before that so you have to be employed at least two years or have a lot of money you have to have good credit or have a lot of money and you have to not have a sketchy bank account or have a lot of money so basically if you're not putting more than 20 percent down which <clears throat> i don't know who the freak is nowadays putting more than 20 percent down on their house but if you're not you, you, you know, you gotta be kind of straight laced. Um, the reason I say not to use like cash app and stuff like that is it can like appear like money laundering or like tax evasion and you just don't want to bring more questions because if they have unaccounted cash, they're going to be like, where is this coming from? I didn't experience this personally, but like some people recommended that to me and it made sense because, you know, people who, um, you know, if you have like a little small business, that's not really your full thing and maybe you haven't claimed on it yet. Uh, you just don't want to have to like go and prove a whole bunch of stuff, especially if you already have the money coming from somewhere else. So just to note that. Um, now, one thing I would say that I wish I would have done differently is when I looked at homes, I wish I had looked at more homes. Uh, I'm pretty happy with what I got, but at the same time, like you don't get to do this again. You get to do it once. I mean, some people say like, don't look at a whole bunch of wedding dresses and some people say no enjoy the experience and some people say you know you know and I will say I did walk into this house and I was like oh my god this is my house and I was just like I picked the most expensive house I did out of all the ones I looked at I picked the most expensive one we drove up here and I was in the car with my boyfriend and I'm like I'm gonna like this house oh my god I'm gonna like this house this one's gonna be my favorite and it cost the most and it was and now I live here so Squidward, try to 
imagine him in his underwear? Oh no, he's hot! Originally it was listed at 210. It came down a little in price. It was like 205. And then I ended up getting it at 195. So I did all right, but definitely I picked the more expensive house. And the other thing I would do totally different is I would definitely just like look at things closer. Um, one thing I noticed after I did move in, just kind of like seeing little things that maybe I should have looked at more before. Like, you know, you're going to live here. You're going to own this house. Don't be like sheepish and shy and not touching things. I mean, the coronavirus was going on real strong and still is. Uh, so I definitely didn't touch stuff as much as I wish I had. You know, I wish I had opened things more and like flip, flip what light switches and closed doors and open doors because there's like a lot of little things that I've already had to kind of replace because it's not a new house. It was built in 1987. So, you know, one of the first things I did was I walked in through the garage door and I went outside and I closed it and then it locked and it just automatically locked itself. It was like the door handle was broken. And I locked myself out of my house and then, um, I had to, I was really lucky, I had the front door unlocked because I had just had a friend over to show her the house. It was amazing that I was able to get in, but I was like, nope, that's gone. So I had to change the doorknob. Um, and then I'm noticing that some of the lights, they kind of don't flip on immediately. So I have to change the switches. And just little things like that, like flip the light switches, um, check the doors, and like little stuff. Uh, the dishwasher. The people who lived here before stole the racks out of the dishwasher. Um, you do a final walkthrough and you check the house before you actually like sign everything. And I remember I did my final walkthrough and they stole the stove. They, and that's, that's property. Like you get to keep the stove. The things that aren't property, like that don't belong to the house are like the microwave, the refrigerator, the washer, the dryer. Those don't belong to the house unless you request them, which I did request the refrigerator to be left here. So um, just FYI. And they took the stove. So I had to make them bring that back before I signed anything. And then once they brought it back, um, I mean, a few days later, I was about to put something in the dishwasher and there's no racks in there. And then they claimed that they never had racks. And then the inspector was like, there were racks there before. And then I found one of the racks in the garage. So I'm just like, I don't know what happened. Now I need a new dishwasher or new racks. But either way, so I wish that my walkthrough I had done, my final walkthrough, I wish I had checked more things uh, before I did, like, when I was looking. I just wish I had checked more things. I mean, it's one of those things where, and I still love the house. I'm still happy with what I picked. I think that this was the most logical choice for what I was looking for. I wanted something that had bigger bedrooms because I'm renting some of the bedrooms out because, you know, help me pay that mortgage and whatnot. But um, I got what I wanted, but I you want to find everything wrong with the house because two reasons. You want to find everything wrong so that you're aware of it so you can, like, process how much that's going to be to fix and, like, uh, how much effort you're willing to put into a house as well. But uh, the real thing is you want to find everything wrong so that you can make them reduce the price. Like, um, I remember when we did our whole inspection, things came back and they were wrong with the house. And basically, we made them do like $5,000 worth of repairs before I even moved in. But you just want to try and find every little nitpick because you want them to either fix that or pay you to fix it because it's their fault. They let it get like that, they let it be like that, and now they gotta fix it. And that's the goal, is you just wanna be nosy. Be nosy. So those are like the only two things I really regret though, in terms of it, I would have looked a little bit more, because I only looked at four houses. Uh, this was my favorite, uh, and we pretty much made an offer that same day. Um, then other than that, uh, just be nosy. Check everything. Do the whole thing. Uh, I think that's pretty much my whole home buying experience. It went really smoothly. Another thing I just want to touch on is don't stress. Because if you know that you have okay credit, you have the money. Uh, for me, I did $10,000 as a down payment, which I felt was like a decently, like a respectable amount. You could do five, like it could be less than that, but you just want to make sure you also have the two to five you need for closing costs as a buffer. Um, then, uh, depending on your state, of course, though. And... I would say that um, I lost my train of thought. I just want people to be aware 
that like don't stress because like they will take your money at the end of the day all these people who are around you they will take your money so if you got good credit you got money you got like a job you know you're straight People will take your money. They will stress you out. They will call you like 30 times telling you, where is this? Where is that? It's going to delay this. You're going to be delayed. You're not going to be able to move in. All this stuff. And you just kind of have to be like, just give it to them. It really stressed me out. And I, that's another thing I will say. I wish I hadn't been so anxious because it's one of those things. Be all end all. Everyone was rooting for me. Everyone wanted me to win. Everyone wanted me to get the house. Everybody wants to take my money. They just want to take it. So, I mean, people will take your money. If you got it, flown it, they will take it. So, don't stress because, I mean, it's going to work out. They're going to do their job. They're going to stress you out. That's their job. And then they're going to get you where you need to be. So, just follow the process. Have faith in the process. Like, don't listen to the horror stories of other people and their closing, their delays, their this. Things happen, but, like... Don't stress because it's just not, it's not going to help you. Like, it'll be okay. If that's not the house for you, um, you'll find another one. Uh, so basically, the biggest things here is credit's important, budget's important. All those fees you hear about, I mean, it's, all those fees, they're not as big as you think they are. Um... Another thing is if you were to, some, for some reason, back out, you don't get to keep the money for like due diligence and things like that. Earnest money, you don't get to keep it. But if they back out or if there's something wrong with the house, they have to give it back to you. So that's another thing to think about. Uh, don't use Cash App. Remember to get yourself a bomb ass realtor. Uh, enjoy the process, look at houses, touch everything, be nosy, and yeah, so that is my home buying experience at 22 years old. Like, comment, subscribe, and let me know what you think. Bye! I'll be back at you next week.